Have you ever heard about supercomputing? It isn't any type of superhero, at least not a human one. Look at your computer. It has at least a CPU or central processing unit, RAM memory and perhaps a GPU, a graphical processing unit. Your CPU may be good enough to process usual stuff, like loading your social networks and playing browser games, but if your CPU is good enough, why do we need GPUs as well? The thing is, there are types of processing that aren't well suited for CPUs, like graphical algorithms, used to create texture, shadow, composing the very bits of your favorite game. CPUs, although currently are composed of many cores, it is still not good enough for some highly parallel algorithms. This is what GPUs do best, parallel processing. Both CPUs and GPUs process stuff by executing a series of instructions, which compose algorithms. Some instructions may process only one data at a time, some may process more, in parallel. We call these concepts SISD and SIMD, single instruction single data and single instruction multiple data. CPUs are good for the first type, while GPUs for the second type. Now, for a usual computer like yours, having both is more than enough for daily usage. On a supercomputing scenario, things are quite different. Supercomputing is the concept of processing a huge amount of data with a huge amount of processing. We can include in this weather forecast, protein analysis, post-processing on animated movies and more. These applications need a powerful computer, usually composed of many processing cores working in a massive parallel harmony. But when processing goes super, so goes the energy consumption. Those supercomputers are usually coupled with a great infrastructure for power supply and cooling system. For example, the National Livermore Laboratory in California had a bill of 14 US dollars with power supply and cooling system as of 2006. In other words, energy matters. For these reasons, there are many ongoing researches on developing energy-efficient heterogeneous systems. A supercomputer equipped with many CPUs, GPUs and other architectures processing parallel is considered a heterogeneous system. The idea is to correctly deploy processing workloads on different architectures in a way that each works on what they are best. This helps to reduce execution time and energy consumption. A great architecture for heterogeneous systems is the Field Programmable Gates Array, or FPGA. The FPGA is an architecture where it is possible to program hardware circuits instead of software. Pretty much every hardware that we use in our digital world are composed of electronic circuits. These electronic circuits compose a more abstract type of circuits, called logic circuits. FPGAs are able to program logic circuits. It means that you can create a CPU or GPU inside an FPGA. The greatest feature of an FPGA is that it is very energy efficient. However, it is very difficult to program it, requiring years of experience in the field. There is currently a lot of effort to create a framework capable of compiling software code, which aren't that difficult to develop, into logical circuits for FPGAs. Results, however, aren't usually as good as manually creating such circuits. By using these frameworks, performances are often comparable or even worse when executing the software directly on CPU or GPU. However, energy consumption is greatly reduced. One framework to assist programming on heterogeneous architecture is OpenCL. By using this OpenCL, developers can program different architectures using a unified language. However, OpenCL has no method for automatically select which architecture is better for a specific type of application. Developing such method would be very interesting in this field, as it would help to better explore heterogeneous systems, thus reducing execution times and power consumption.
My proposed method will use data mining and design space exploration to automatically map applications on different architectures. Let's say we have an algorithm for calculating weather forecasts. This application can be split into segments called kernels. If we compile all kernels on all available architectures in a heterogeneous system by using OpenCL, we can find out on which each executes best. Then we can manually map kernels to each architecture and make the communication stuff. But FPGAs have a problem, their compilation time may take from minutes to hours. If we are making such mapping for an application that will be executing for a long time continuously, we can take this manual approach. But if we have a platform offering supercomputing as a service, this would be a problem. A supercomputer as a service will execute several different applications, and mapping all of those manually in little time is tedious and infeasible. Therefore, we will try to infer the energy consumption of an application by using data mining. Data mining is a concept in computer science used to classify a set of stuff or data in respect to their similarity. The idea is to have a set of reference kernels, which we all know the execution times and energy consumption. Then, use data mining to classify the kernel that we want to map in respect to this reference set without compiling or executing it. We do this to all kernels that compose our application. Then, we tie all together, the kernels in their best architectures according to our assumptions. Now we have a new problem, communication. We need to create communication between these kernels. If each is executing on different architectures, the communication may become a bottleneck. In other words, our architectures may execute amazingly fast, but the communication system may not be fast enough. This means that we need further optimizations. Some kernels may be executed on less suitable architectures, just so that we don't need to transfer data between them. This step is called Design Space Exploration, where we will test many different possibilities of solution. After repeating this step of Design Space Exploration a couple of times, we should have a mapping for our application in a way that energy efficiency and communication costs are both in harmony for an optimized execution reducing costs. Now this is my project. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, like the video, make a comment, a suggestion and everything. And if you didn't like, comment anyway.